welcome to the Entertainment Gig Podcast, episode 16. My name is Cleon. On this week's episode, we discuss musical theater, working as a clown, and crowdfunding with actress, writer, and producer of the film Girl Clown, Miss Crystal Scott. This week's interview is with Crystal Scott. Crystal is a multi-hyphenated talent who has created a short film called Girl Clown. Now she's trying to make it into a feature film, and with your help, she will do just that. This is what I love about this industry, is that in a time when we talk about why there aren't any good roles for women and people of color, we have people like Crystal who will just go and create their own roles, and it's people such as Crystal who we have to rise up and support if we as an industry are going to progress. So here, without any further ado, is the multi-talented Miss Crystal Scott. All right. Uh, thank you very much, for starters, for doing this. I appreciate it. Yeah, thank you for having me. Um, for starters, where were you born exactly? So I'm from uh, Southern California. Um, I was born in Orange County uh, near Disneyland. So I grew up in Orange County area. Um, yeah, and then I moved to New York uh, after college. Oh, okay. Uh, growing up in Southern California, was that near where all the fires are right now? No, no it's actually, as far as I know, because my, my sister uh, lived, my, most of my family actually still lives there. Um, it's not near the fires. It's in a different area. But oh. My sister lives near the fires. So. Wow. Ooh, that's scary. Well, I hope she's doing okay out there. Yeah, but she's here. Me. Uh, which uh, which college did you go to? I went to UCLA. UCLA. What'd you study? Uh, I actually studied sociology, but um, it's funny because I wasn't a filmmaker then. I was um, I've always been an actress uh, since I was a little girl. I've been an actress and a writer, but I would take film classes at UCLA just because I thought they were interesting. So it's interesting that now I'm a filmmaker. Oh. What yeah. got you hooked on acting at a young age? Well, um, I well, I started out being really shy, and so my mom would put me in things. She started putting me in pageants, actually, when I was really little. Um, and then um, when I was seven, she put me in children's theater. And I loved that, and um, it helped me. Eventually, it helped me overcome my shyness. And I used to, uh, I started out playing little, small roles because I was only seven. And then when I got to be like 10, nine or 10, I started playing the lead role. It was children's theater, so it's like kids playing all the roles. So, yeah, so it kind of it helped me a lot with the children's theater. Huh. And what made you get into writing off of uh, acting? Yeah, so I I always wrote. I used to read a lot when I was a little girl. I read all the time. And then I just started writing when I was little, like naturally. I would just write stories. And then when I started doing theater, I also started writing plays. Like for my, I have a big family. There are four kids in my family. So I would put on plays. I would write plays, and then I would direct them with my siblings and my neighbor, the kids in my neighborhood. So I started writing and directing at a young age, just naturally, because it was fun. Oh, okay. Now, yeah. the industry is, well, let's face it, Southern California is a company town, and that company is entertainment. So yeah. what made you come all the way from from Southern California to New York when the industry's already out there? Yeah, so, so actually I started professionally um, working in the industry when I was 14 um, because I 
because I loved acting and I asked my mom, I didn't ask my mom, but my mom asked me if I wanted to get an agent because I was um, reading books about getting an agent when I was 14. Um, so I was kind of serious about it <laughs> when I was a teenager. So I already got, I already was kind of like in the industry when I was a teenager. Um, and then I also did a lot of musical theater and I kind of just decided after college that musical theater is what uh, I wanted to pursue at that point. So I moved to New York because that's the place that you pursue musical theater, seriously. Right. Um, that's where all the, the great teachers are and all that stuff. Oh, so, okay. So, so yeah. did you study here under anybody or did you just pound the pavement to try and get a job? Professional classes. I used to take like on camera classes a lot, um, but I didn't really start studying serious, seriously acting until I moved to New York and I got a acting teacher. Oh, okay. Uh, what was your first gig once you moved to New York? Well, my first gig, I did a national tour. I got I started working right away when I moved to New York. I worked a lot in musical theater, like mostly national tours or regional and um, some some off-Broadway off stuff. And um, I did a national tour of The Wizard of Oz that played Dorothy. Um, so that was like a, a big gig for me when I first moved here. That's actually a really good gig. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. What, what did you like about touring as opposed to just being on Broadway and being stationary? I think I think a lot of people, when they first start out in theater, work a lot on tour because um, they're more open to... Touring is kind of hard, um, and you're kind of more open. You're not really established yet, so when you first move to New York, like touring is kind of natural um, for you to be traveling around. Um, so it's more like, I don't know if it was a choice. It, it was kind of a choice because I love traveling, and it was really fun. So I enjoyed seeing different um, states and countries even because one of my tours went to Mexico and Canada. Um, so I got, to, I got to really see a lot of different places. So that huh. was great. What was your favorite place to go to while on tour? Maybe my favorite. That was really beautiful. I recommend Alaska. Anyone's looking to travel somewhere really beautiful. Alaska. Um, I love Colorado too, but most people have been to. I mean, a lot of people have been to Colorado, but Alaska's a little bit, you know, out of the way. <laughs> so, but super beautiful with the well, glaciers. Well, I do hear you can see Russia from everybody's house up in Alaska. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, good old Sarah Palin. Um, okay, so you were doing musical theater, but then what made you hop off of that train for a little while to just do basic acting in films or TV or whatever? Yeah, so I didn't really hop off of it. It's more like I added, I sort of... In sort of opened it up so I wasn't just pursuing musical theater. It's not like I always just pursued musical theater because I did start in TV and film um, when I was younger, um, but I just started getting more roles in film and um, I liked it, you know, I, I, I enjoyed it. So right. I think it just started, you know, adding that on. It's not like I ever stopped doing musical theater and I don't, you know, it's just something that you, you add on, you know, it's something that I don't think you ever stop doing it. If you're, a, you're, you do that really well, why would you stop, you know? Right. So, so it, it's yeah. mainly just adding a layer to the resume as opposed to switching gears entirely. Yeah, it's, it's kind of, I mean, I always, I've always, always did it anyway. So it's more like I did it. I opened it up so that I was focusing on more things versus just one thing in New York. I think the thing is that when you move to New York, sometimes because there is 
so much theater in New York that it's easy to just completely focus on that and forget about the TV and film. So I just had to kind of open it up. And also, as I was doing that, there was more TV and film that was being produced here. So yeah. that was a part of it, too. Yeah. Yeah, the last few years have been pretty much yeah. a, a TV explosion in the city, exactly. really. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So, exactly. So, I think more people are pursuing it in New York versus when I first moved here. Right. Um, How long have you yeah. been in the city? Um, I've been here quite a while, since the late 90s. Oh, okay. Yeah, same here. 96 was when yeah. I moved, so yeah. Yeah. Um, in terms of your acting gigs, what roles did you get uh, in New York so far? Um, I've done just lots of, uh, you mean in my, like, films? Yeah, films, uh, TV. Yeah, like films. Yeah, I've done a lot of um, short films. Okay. Uh, I'm not, yeah, I did a a film, you guys can look them up, uh, called The Ventriloquist, uh, another one called Soulmate, um, I've done just a, just a whole bunch of short films, and then I did, I've done some TV, um, oh, I have a web series coming out called Acting School, which, um, I'm one of the lead characters in, it's really cool, and it's coming out think next month but i'll have all that on my um, once once it is out i will um put it on twitter and everything so everyone can see it oh excellent watch it. now let's discuss being on the short film range you have a short film out that you are trying to make into a full-length film short so I wrote and starred in and produced a short film called Girl Clown and that short film did very well on the film festival circuit and then it got great reviews and it did very very well for a short film and so now I am making it into a feature film okay so, yeah uh, and, aside from the fact that it's a girl who's a clown, what is, which is sort of obvious, uh, what is the movie actually about? Yeah, so the movie is actually about overcoming shyness and overcoming your fears. So that's really what it's about. Um, it's a shy young woman who lives in New York um, who really wants to be able to fall in love and she has a neighbor that she has a crush on she can't even he says hello and she can't even like feel confident enough to talk to him um and she really wants to overcome it so she ends up becoming a clown and by putting on a costume she feels more comfortable <laughs> and she's able to sort of well you'll see it but you know is able to overcome some of her limitations. So the feature film is based on that idea as well. Did you put in any aspects of yourself, since you were talking about shyness earlier, into this script? Did you find this uh, therapeutic in a way? Yeah, so I, I feel like the film is kind of a microcosm of my life because I started off as a shy little girl and I was able to overcome my shyness by being in theater and being able to play different characters. And that is really how I was able to overcome it. And I think a lot of actors are like that. Um, as I've been doing, as I've been putting my film out there and um, make, uh, crowdfunding for the feature film, I've had a lot of people say that that's why they've gotten into <laughs> into performing arts is the same reason, um, like overcoming their uh, their shyness or their fears. Yeah. So, yeah, so I'm not the only one. <laughs> no, definitely <laughs> not. That seems yeah. to be, in all the people that I've interviewed who are 
in the performance part of the industry as opposed to behind the scenes the main thing has always come that's always come up is overcoming shyness and insecurities right exactly exactly yep it's it's interesting like you would think it's the other way around and i think there are plenty of people who um that's not the case you know and they just do it like there it's natural for them but there's a whole bunch of us that are in my boat you know (laughs) that that are doing it um it, it helps them you know it helps it's a it's a, it's a good thing to help them overcome those fears. Right. So for the short film version of this, how long did it take since you basically did virtually everything? Yeah, so, um, well, I didn't do everything, but I did do a lot on the producing end, and I and I did write it. and I did, But I, I had a lot of people helping me a film takes so many people um, to actually get it. You know, it's very much a collaborative process. But I spent two years writing the short film, and then I spent um, about six months from pre-production to shooting it, and then it took a year to finish it. Um, finishing a film is just takes a lot of time. It takes as much time as shooting it or more time because you have um, many people helping you, an editor, color, grading, writing a score, you know, having, I mean, having a composer write a score for you, many things go into finishing a film. So, um, yeah, so it took a, quite a while <laughs> to finish it in the way that I wanted to, you know, I, I wanted to make it really good, so I, I did spend a lot of time making sure that it was. So now as you make the transition from making this a short film into making this a feature film, what are you finding to be, aside from the money, and we'll definitely talk about the crowdfunding, uh, aside from the financial aspects of it, what are you finding to be the most difficult in terms of making that transition to a longer format? Right now, I think it, it is the, the financial right now because that's kind of on the forefront. And once we do that, um, I don't think it's going to be um, such a transition. It's one of my friends told me that a feature film is just a long short film. So, and since we've already made a short film, and it's, you know, essentially the same. It's not exactly the same story. It's been expanded, um, and there are a lot more characters. So again, it's like um, expanding it out and having more characters. Um, I think that would be the main difference, and having more people on board this time because it's just a bigger film. Right. What made you want to make this into a full length since you had success with the the shorter version? Well, I wrote a number. I wrote two other feature films before I wrote this one. I didn't actually plan to make it into a feature. Originally, way before I made the short film, I did have the idea to make it a feature film, not a short film. I guess that was the original idea was was for it to be a feature film. And then at that point, it was my first film, and it was just it was it just seemed more logical to do the short film. Um, <clears throat> And then after I made the short film, I really didn't think about it as a feature film. And I started writing other films, but then people would ask me, uh, are you going to make it into a feature film? And that would be a great feature film. Um, And so I started writing it. And once I started writing it, I realized that it would make a great feature film because there's, because, um, the film is also based on um, my own clown experience, which we haven't talked about, but this is working as a clown in New York, um, and there's just so much so much material <laughs> to use in a feature <laughs> film. There's tons of material from my experience, just so many interesting people, interesting characters, and so so that's, that's why, and it just ended up 
being the right thing to do the future. Okay. So now, do you want to talk about working as a clown right now, or do you want... Okay. Before we get to the crowdfunding then, what was... What's the best part, or tell us a funny story about working as a clown, or even like a bad story about working as a clown. I guess, like, I mean, what made the the story that made me want to make it into a film was that I would walk to my clown gigs in a clown costume, in my clown costume, on the street in New York, and people would smile at me. And, you know, New Yorkers, they're not, um, they don't really care. Like, anybody who walks down the street, they don't really, a famous person, they don't really care, you know. um, (laughs) But it was strange, because I would go on the street in the clown costume, and it's not, it's not a white-faced clown, it's just like a polka dotted dress and a red nose that I painted on, you know, so it's a very simple kind of approachable clown. Um, and people would smile at me and they would ask me questions like, where did I get my costume and how did I get to become a clown? So they felt very comfortable approaching me and they would always, every single time they would smile and come up and talk to me. And I just thought that was really interesting. Like, somebody should follow me around with the camera because it was weird because no as a New Yorker that does not happen you know people don't just people they're not going to stop you know in their busy day to talk to you that's very um, true usually they're glaring at you as you walk by so yeah. yeah exactly it's the opposite so I was like what is this so that's why I wanted that's the other idea with the shyness and also with the clown thing that is really what made me make it into a film Okay. Now, let's talk about the crowdfunding. Uh, which okay. site is it on? So it's on a site called Seed and Spark. Um, not everybody is familiar with it, so I'm just going to explain what it is. It's like Kickstarter, but it's just for filmmakers. Um, so, But it's, it's very similar to Kickstarter in that you have to make a certain amount of money. Uh, you have to raise a certain amount of money to actually get the money for your film. So uh, it's not like Indiegogo, which you get all the money, it doesn't matter. On Seed and Spark, it's kind of like all or nothing. You have to make a certain amount to get the money. Okay. And it's a great website. Hmm. Very reputable. Yeah. Oh, that's good news then. Um, yeah. When does the Kickstarter, or sorry, I'm just going to keep saying Kickstarter because it's <laughs> that's that's like it, yeah it's crowdfunding yes kickstarter is sort of the ubiquitous term like kleenex or kleenex is for tissue uh but when does the uh when does the crowdfunding end okay it ends in two weeks so um mid-august and i don't have the date here um but it ends in exactly two weeks from today or actually 13 days from today, if today's Sunday. And um, it, we're doing really well. We're at 40, I think we're at 43%, which is really very steady. We're, we're steadily moving along. Um, and, yeah. Okay. So, oh, yeah, and also you can go, to, so you go to um, seedandspark.com, and just search Girl Clown and you'll find it. Or if you want to type in the address, it's uh, www.girlclownfeature.com slash seed and spark. So either of those ways you can get to the actual crowdfunding campaign. Um, and then also if you want to watch the short film, it's available on Vimeo for free so you can just watch it. It's about 15 minutes long, um, and you just do a search Girl Clown Vimeo, and it'll come up. You can watch that, too. And um, we're going to put all of that all of that in the show notes so that people will okay. be able to, to just click on right. to make it easier. Uh, are there any perks in terms of levels of the, crown, of the crowdfunding? Yes. Yeah. So we have 
a whole bunch of fun clown themed rewards. They all have, all the reward levels have clown names. And yeah, there's all kinds of stuff. There's like um, if you want credit in the film, like your name in the film, that's a kind of a lower uh, a lower contribution. So that's nice. Uh, and then you can get a, a digital download of the film. You can get a shout out from some of the clowns in the cast. Like if you want to send like a thank you or a, I'm sorry to someone, <laughs> um, our clowns will do a little special shout out, a personalized message for you. So that's one of them. That's pretty popular. Um, we have right now, we have a very limited associate producer credit right now it's a hundred dollars which is good for an associate producer credit you get that on imdb and on in the film at, at the end in the credit so that's that's actually popular too right now that's limited we only have a uh, number of those available and yeah there's a whole bunch of fun things different kinds of rewards you can be an actor in the movie which is really fun to you. We'll cast you as an actor in the movie, a character, and give you a costume and everything like that. Oh, okay. Uh, in terms of after this is all complete and it does really well, where do you see yourself going in terms of your career? So I'm writing a number of different things. I'm in the process of writing a movie. I have a couple things I'm writing. I'm writing a movie about internet dating. <laughs> um, so that's one of my projects. I also have a completely different project, which takes place in China, because I've, I've toured as an actor in China, and it's just so interesting, the whole experience of being an American performer in China. So I'm writing that as well, and that is more like a kind of like half improv and half scripted film, uh, and so I, that's another project that I have as well. Are you looking? And then I have a lot of acting projects too. Oh, okay. Are you looking to turn both of those films into feature films or short films? I'm writing them both as features. I'm not sure what the one in China is going to end up being because I just don't know. I don't, I've never shot in China. I've never, I'm not sure how that works. So I don't know what that one's going to be. But the, the internet dating one is definitely a, a feature film. Yeah. It sounds like, judging from the laughter, that that's sort of an almost autobiographical. <laughs> it's, it's, well, it's, I have done the internet dating, and then I have a lot of friends who have done it, too. So it's kind of like collecting everybody's crazy stories about that. <laughs> um, and, yeah, and then, you know, it's funny because it's just one of the things I was writing, but again, it's one of those things that you tell people, and they're like, oh, my gosh, why isn't there a movie about that? And I, I think there must be. There must be a lot of movies about that, but I can't really recall one. So, yeah. Anyway, I I think yeah. the last one I can recall is uh, You Got Mail, which was, right, exactly. yeah, like you back in the 90s. Yeah. Which I love. I actually love that movie. Yes, great movie. So, yeah. Um, all right. So we've got the crowdfunding going. It's going on for another couple of weeks. We're going to make this film. This is the part where you get to push the crowdfunding. You can push your businesses, you can push future acting, you can push your social media, you get as long as you want, and the floor is yours as of now. Okay, so you can go to www.girlclownfeature.com slash seed and spark. And that is the crowdfunding for the feature film. And we have a fun two-minute video that we made. Uh, it talks about the short film, and it has our... We have an all-female filmmaking team. 
that is in the video as well. And um, so you can go to that and check that out. And that's where all the clown rewards are. And you can you can jump in and be a part of our feature film. And then if you'd like to watch the short film, just do a Google search for Girl Clown Vimeo, V-I-M-E-O. And it'll come up. And it's the one that's about 15 minutes long. And uh, you can watch that for free. And then if you would like to follow me on social media, I'm on Twitter a lot, and my Twitter address is at Crystal Scott, so it's at Crystal, C-R-Y-S-T-A-L-S-C-O-T-T, uh, and on Facebook, it's slash Crystal Faith Scott, and, um, oh, also, I have a website that is my acting website, and it has a lot of clips from my acting and lots of photos and news, all my acting news, and that is crystalfaith.com. You can go there too. There's also a link to my short film there, so that's a good way to get to my short film as well. And my crowdfunding campaign. All right, and the crowdfunding is up in two weeks from technically as we record this Saturday although it will be when it comes out Sunday the 30th, 31st. I don't even know what today is, to be honest with you. But I do know that August 1st is Monday. So by the process of elimination... (laughs) Yeah, it it ends on Saturday. So it ends on... I'll tell you right now because I have my calendar out. It looks like it ends on... um, Oh, no. Yeah, it ends on the 12th. So it ends on August 12th. Okay, folks, so you have until yeah. August 12th. Until August 12th, yeah, to be part of our super fun, amazing feature film. What makes okay. you passionate? I'm not talking romance. I'm talking, you know, just <laughs> just saying. Let's just clarify that for the record. What in terms of the business, in terms of in terms of doing what you love, doing the things yeah. that you do. What is it? Yeah, what, what makes you it? so passionate? What drives what, you? What drives me? Cuz people don't put themselves through this much torture for nothing. That's for sure. <laughs> That makes perfect sense. It's almost like you have something 
it needs to come out. There's no way around yeah, it, and exactly. you would do it for free regardless. It's just exactly. something inside that creatively just has to be put out there. Yes, and that, like, for filmmaking, I know in my experience with acting, if you're doing it to make money or to become famous, I don't recommend that because you, there's no guarantee of that that you're going to make money or that you're going to be famous. But if you're doing it just because you love it, because you're passionate about it, and that's what drives you, that's, that's the most important thing. Because, yeah, there's no guarantee about any of the other stuff, but at least you're creating something. And that's, that's the best part is the creative, the creative process is, is the best part, it, for me anyway. That's what I love about it. All right, last two questions, and they're a combination. If, since you have done musical theater, you've done television, you've done movies, you've done writing, you've done acting, you've done producing, if you could only do one of those, which one would it be and why? Oh, my goodness. Oh, I mean, you know, I'm going to have to say acting because I love acting. So, I mean, I do love the filmmaking, too, but the filmmaking, there are a number of things that you can do in filmmaking, and I don't know if I could choose just one, like directing or, like, writing or, you know, but acting, I would choose, just, you know, I could choose just acting because, yeah, acting is so fun and you can play there are multiple different people that you can play and you can have different projects and yeah so I would choose acting and continue to get over your shyness <laughs> exactly <laughs> <laughs> Crystal Scott thank you very very much for doing this it's been an absolute yeah. pleasure thank you so much for having me That was Crystal Scott. The crowdfunding campaign ends on August 12th, and you can find it at www.girlclownfeature.com slash seed and spark. And that's S as in Sam, E E D as in David, A N D S as in Sam, P A R K. Crystal's Twitter handle is at Crystal Faith. That's F A I T H Scott. So Crystal Faith Scott. Her Facebook is also Crystal Faith Scott. And the short film for Girl Clown can actually be found at Vimeo. And the address is Vimeo.com slash and the numbers six. Three, one, nine, four, five, six, seven. Again, that's Vimeo.com slash six, three, one, nine, four, five, six, seven. And if for some reason that doesn't work, just Google clown or girl clown Vimeo and it should pop up rather easily. It's the first link on Google's search engine. That is it for this week's episode. Our website is theentertainmentgig.com. Our Facebook page is at The Entertainment Gig. We are on iTunes and Google Play at The Entertainment Gig, but we are also on SoundCloud at cjbt-productions and on YouTube at CJBT Productions, which has a slideshow of my photography, which you can find on Facebook at CJBT Photography, and the portfolio at CJBTProductions.Zenfolio, that's Z-E-N-F-O-L-I-O dot com. And that is it. We will talk with you next week. Take care.